Well, um, I'll hand over to a, a way more capable speaker than myself. Um, Yvonne, would you mind joining me on stage, please? Guys, we're in for a, for a really exciting treat here. Um, Yvonne has put together one of, I think, the best keynotes I've ever, ever heard. Uh, and uh, we're, we're privileged today to have her on stage with us again uh, to share some ideas of our founder life design with us. Yvonne, over to you. Thanks so much for being here. Hello. Lovely to see you again. I'm just imagining all the rest of your faces out there. Um, yeah, thanks for having me today. Um, I've done a similar talk to this before. Um, and, you know, each time I look at this, this uh, content, I really just, I, I'm so amazed at how, um, how useful it is um, to me on a daily basis, but also how um, applicable it is, I think, to everyone. Um, and in preparing for this talk in this context, uh, business founders, entrepreneurs changing the rules and changing the world, I'm struck by how difficult it is to be in this role. Of course, it's fun too, almost all of the time. But if you think about it, it's also wildly difficult to think of something novel, build it, manage it, and scale it, and then keep your life together and yourself sane at the same time. Have you ever wondered how entrepreneurs of yesterday, yesteryear, the ones that did what they did when message traveled by post and fax, could possibly have thought of themselves as busy? Um, you know, they lived lives at a much slower pace, assimilating a fraction of the input that we work through each day. Have you ever wondered how on earth we as entrepreneurs will be able to survive with the exponential increase in information, responsibility and expected output at an exponentially faster pace in future? And in this day and age, what each of us are expected to carry, I think, is, is pretty much impossible. And so and it's only going to increase. And this used to keep me up at night. Um, but thankfully, not anymore. So today I'm going to talk about life design. Um, for, you know, through trial and error, I've worked out three principles that for me, um, with ruthless application, have left me with extra time and space to play with, uh, and a level of success and commitment I had not imagined, uh, contentment, sorry, I had not imagined possible. Um, what I've learned is from my own journey, not specific to being a, free, a female entrepreneur or a legal entrepreneur, but I'd like to share it because it's been so profound that it's the thing most commented on by the people that I meet. Uh, my business, Caveat Legal, is a virtual law firm, uh, an Airbnb for lawyers, if you will. Uh, we have about 50 top tier legal specialists who we make available to businesses through an online platform that removes most of the bulk and cost usually associated with lawyers. Our business model was so robust that we didn't need to make a single change when COVID hit. Uh, and posted revenue growth of 65% in that year, just in time to celebrate our 10th birthday this year. I'm also a single mom with three kids, a dog, kind of functional household, um, and I'm also the founder of an NGO tackling gender-based violence. So what are these three principles that make surviving and thriving in the entrepreneurial overload possible? For me, they are the following. One, simplicity. In this life, it's survival of the simplest. Simplicity means to strip out the non-essential, slim things down and keep them basic. Two, design. Design every aspect of life for efficiency and freedom. This means being deliberate in building systems that work, moving things around and making iterative adjustments to remove friction and achieve um, efficiency. And number three, consistency. Positive change, I've noticed, comes only from repeated and ongoing application of the same principles. Simplicity, design, consistency. So for each area of overwhelm in my own life, the process I have followed has looked something like this. I've stripped it down of everything that it is not the thing that I want um, or in service of the thing I want. I've designed and built exactly what I want with what's left. And I've followed this up by consistently re-implementing and reinforcing every day. Now, the idea of design may be sexy, but simplicity and consistency are definitely not sexy. Uh, keeping things basic and repeating things daily is definitely not exciting. In fact, it can be downright boring, not the optimal state of mind for an entrepreneur. But over time, these actions compound, and the result is more and more value, like compound interest. Simplicity, design, consistency. I believe that in future, our success and possibly even our ultimate survival will depend on our focus on these three principles. Let's have a look at this in more depth. I'll use two aspects of my life to illustrate. First in business, 
key to the caveat business model is absolute simplicity. Simplicity for clients, simplicity for lawyers, simplicity for me and the management team. Every decision is made with a view to reducing complexity. For example, we work to remove complexity and friction points for clients and lawyers every day. Personally, I have removed or outsourced all tasks that make my work complex or take me out of flow. The result is that Caveat is now a huge machine with no offices and only one official employee on the payroll. Then in my personal life, key to my happiness is absolute simplicity. I have removed all things that unnecessarily take time, like driving or energy, like draining friendships or tasks that create power struggles with my kids and focus only on the things that feed me and us. The result in my life looks something, something like this on any given day. I wake up every morning to the tinkling sound of my sons unpacking the dishwasher after they've woken up and dressed themselves and before they've made their school lunch. I take the dog for a quick walk, make breakfast for us and do a craft activity for my daughter. The boys walk or skate to school. I walk Anna to school. I then work, but only on the things I like. The rest is done by more capable and inspired people. I meditate. I exercise often with one or other dear friend. I do most extramural runs on foot. I work. The kids do their homework in their own time. And when they're done, they sign, their, they sign my name in their homework diaries, which I taught them to do on the first day they got homework. We cook, we have dinner together, we walk, skate or hang out in the evenings and then we go to bed. Now, this didn't happen by accident. I stripped out all the unnecessary and designed our life for efficiency and freedom. And we live these principles every day. Simplicity, design, consistency. If this resonates with you, give it a try. Like most things in life, you'll find that by living these principles, you'll attract others with similar values uh, in work and in life. It's been amazing to see how those who align with our values seek caveat out for their legal work time and again, and refer us to like-minded people. The whole process has been very natural and it takes absolutely no force. With this level of careful thought and deliberate action, vital change takes shape and importantly, vital space opens up for life. It really is that simple.